down below, everyone. Welcome on board. Welcome aboard the simple one. On your right, watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs. Doors are going to be sliding closed here. Uh, Sante Sana Warden. And um, Jumbo, everyone. My name's Daniel. I'll be your guide today out here on the Arambe Wildlife Reserve. Just before we get out there, we're gonna go over and do safety basics together. So please remain seated and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. So please make sure to supervise children. You can have small ones seated on your laps. But if they're up there again, just make sure they remain there the entire time. It gets pretty bumpy out here, so I just want everyone to remain where they're at now and try to be as safe as possible. Without further ado, let's head into the Little Terry Forest. Animals tend to be pretty timid and shy around here. I'll look to the right. Oh, wait, in the back, there is no copy back there. I'll we'll get another look at them in just a bit. They're hiding right behind that bamboo there. They stand out quite a bit, though, because of those white stripes on their legs. Let's see if we can get a little bit better of a view from up here. Oh, there we go. Uh, stripes look pretty similar to a zebra, but the little copy over there actually related to the giraffe. Oh, and then look over here on your left. A beautiful look at some bongos laying out there. Oh, one waking up there. Both the male and the female bongos have those big horns. They're angled backwards. That helps them get through bushes easier without them getting all tangled up. They're very reclusive animals, often referred to as the ghost of the forest for that reason. I see some greater kudu a little bit on the right, but they're hiding behind the bushes right now. I'm trying to get a lo another look at them in just a bit. Yeah. Oh, here on the right, also kind of hiding in the bushes, but we'll get to see the saddle-built stork there, those tall black and white birds. They're some of the tallest stork in Africa, usually standing around five feet tall and having wingspans that can be up to nine feet wide. driving through the forest is that a lot of the animals are kind of hiding in the bushes. As I said earlier, a lot of the animals that live here are very timid and shy in nature. They like living in the forest environment because it provides them with plenty of places for them to hide. Looking pretty quiet on this side of the forest, so let's move forward. Next, we're going to head over towards the Safi River. We drive by the Safi River. We're going to be on the lookout for some of our aquatic animals. Oh wow, we're actually going to get a great look. Yeah, we're going to have one of our Nile hippopotamus over there on your right hand side. Oh wow, check them out there. Wow. That's actually normally very rare to see them outside on land at this time. It's usually way too hot for them outside, but it's pretty cool today, so this one feels okay to come on out. As adults, these hippos weigh about three to four thousand pounds. Very, very large animals there. Looks like we got a few more hippos over there on the left. You can see them moving around in the water. Pelicans around here as well. You get that name because of the pink tint that comes onto their feathers during the mating seasons. I uh, get a great view of this hippo moving around here. Yeah, see them start to dive down. That's because they don't really swim like we do. They just kind of sink to the bottom and then they pretty much walk and kick themselves off the floor down there. Oh, look on here on the left. We got another one coming out of the water. Look at these Nile crocodiles here. 
These are the largest crocodilians in Africa. They can grow to be up to 20 feet long. You can see one with their mouth wide open. They're actually doing that to help pull their bodies down. back there mostly eat fish but they're also very opportunistic hunters meaning that they'll pretty much try to attack and eat whatever crosses their path one animal that they don't really tend to attack though are the hippos that we saw earlier hippos are actually very dangerous very territorial animals so much so that even the crocs know not to mess with them most of the time at least like we made our way out of the Safi River, and next we're going to be heading into the savannah. I'll peek out over to the right real quick. You can actually already see a few animals out there. The savannah is going to be home to some of Africa's most well-known animals. So you should see some pretty familiar-looking faces up ahead here. <laughs> Look at some Hartman's Mountain Zebras there. Each one has a unique set of stripes, so no two are ever quite the same. You see our youngest one is trailing behind the rest. He is about nine months old. Still really young. Zebras are born with their legs almost at full length though, so he's pretty big already. We also got a small herd of wildebeest here. Usually find them hanging out in large herds, so we should see a few more of them up ahead as well. Ooh, I actually got a lot of animals hanging out over here. Up ahead on the right, Morty's seeing a giraffe up there and and coli cattle. Oh, and look over on the left-hand side. So we have some African wild dogs laying out on top of the den and a few out on front as well. They look pretty similar to hyenas, but not actually related at all. I've been referred to as the painted dogs as well because of the bright colors on their coat patterns. Wow, we're getting a great look at a lot of animals here. Right next to us, we're going to get a great look at these Ancoli cattle here with those massive horns. Those horns on the Ancoli cattle can grow to be up to six feet long from end to end. Let's see a sable antelope further back there with those curved horns. Uh, of course, we got a great look at that one Maasai giraffe there eating from the tree. Now, we do have several giraffe here, so we should see a few more up ahead. For the most part, we are going to find them hanging out by trees and just eating whatever they can off of them. Giraffes spend most of their days eating, usually about 16 to 20 hours a day. Now we'll keep on moving forward, looking out for some more of those giraffe up there. Yeah, very busy over here on the side of the reserve. Let's see one more wildebeest there on the left. Looks like it's going to go join the rest of them. It's not widely known, but those wildebeest are one of the fastest land animals in the world. Full speed, they can run up to about 50 miles per hour. pretty slowly like he is now but they can run fast if they want to they can run up to 35 miles per hour let's have those little brown antelope a little bit further back there those are called springbok those little guys are very athletic they can run up to about 55 miles per hour and jump up about six feet high into the air i got even a few more trap up ahead here Oh, we'll see them mostly on the left, but we'll see some up ahead on the right as well. 
Again, mostly just eating food, as I said. It's pretty much all they do. And I'll see our young one here. Yeah, our little baby giraffe there on the left. Yeah, he's such a cutie. Oh, look at his face. He's about seven months old. His name's Humphrey. <laughs> When he was born, he was about six feet tall. And he's actually already gained a few feet since then. Yeah. Already getting so big. Now we're starting to make our way over towards elephant country, so let's see if we can find some elephants up ahead here. Not seen them yet, but look up ahead on your left. We have a whole troop of mandrels up there. Yeah, we'll see our largest male over there. Bright red and blue markings on his face. We do have some babies in there as well. Oh, look at him swinging around there. So active right now. These mantras aren't the largest monkeys in the world, so the babies will get quite a bit bigger. Oh, let's catch up to these elephants. I've already seen them coming up on the right hand side. We show you a really nice view from up here. There they are. Got two of them over here. Easiest way to tell they're African elephants are those big ears of theirs. Their ears are almost kind of shaped like the continent of Africa, so it makes it really easy to remember. We got just two of them here, so we can guess that they're probably male. Male elephants tend to go off in small groups once they mature. Whereas female elephants, on the other hand, they tend to stick around with larger herds. Now we're going to keep on moving forward, see if we can find a larger herd. Just up ahead here. for a lot of the animals that live out here on the dry season. That's why baobab trees are often referred to as the tree of life as well. Uh, looks like you didn't get a great look at some elephants. I think I see them all the way in the back there. Uh, just hanging out a little bit further back. But right next to us here, we'll see the greater flamingo. These are the largest flamingos in the world. Uh, on the island, mostly on the left side, you'll see some flamingos covered in Feathers. You can tell they're still very young because well, because they're born with all gray feathers. Actually born with these little gray balls. And as they get older, they start to turn pink because of the shrimp they eat. It usually takes about two years before they fully change colors up. But we know those ones there are still very young. Some of those elephants in the back, we might be able to see them to the left here. Now if you look in that little area, you can see a few more hanging out back there. Yeah, that was our youngest well there. She's about five. Yeah, I couldn't get a great look at them, but as well as they are hanging out in the back there. Let's see who is 
up ahead here. Not seeing anyone yet, but there's that big mud pit on the left hand side. Looks like there's some pretty fresh mud there as well. Now that's a good sign that we got some more rhinos nearby. Rhinos have really sensitive skin, just like you and I, they can get sunburned. Something that they'll do to help protect themselves out in the wild is roll around in mud pits just like that one. The mud coats their skin and it kind of works like sunscreen for them. It helps protect them through the day. Oh, now we'll keep our eyes peeled for some rhinos, but look to your left. Oh, I think she's laying down, but there is a cheetah hanging out in the bushes over there. Yeah, I can see the spots. Oh, there's one walking around right ahead. Oh, I get a beautiful look at that cheetah there. Beautiful look at that cheetah walking around there. Uh, some things are pretty hard to find. Oh, we got another one laying out. Their coat patterns actually give them really strong natural camouflage, but right now we're getting a great view of them. And I see, I think, one more also laying out in this pile of hay over here. And then another one laying out there. So I actually got to see all five of our cheetahs. So they're mostly just relaxing right now. They are the fastest laying animals in the world, though. They can run up to 65 miles per hour at full speed. They are more sprinters, though, so they can't hold that speed for too long before they get tired and have to slow down. Looks like we made our way up to the Kopi Rock. It's our large rock formations found out in the savannah. Very popular spots to find lions. Not seeing those lions yet, but let's circle around. Looks like on the right, we'll get a little bit of a sneak peek at some animals up ahead. We'll get another look at them in just a bit. But yeah, it looks like we got some ostrich up there. Ostrich are the largest birds in the world. We'll try to get closer. Oh, but look to your left here. Yeah, it looks like we have our lions over there. They're all just kind of laying down sleeping right now, but we can definitely see them from the edge of the rock there. Looks like one of our lionesses is at least somewhat awake there. Uh, lions do spend most of their days sleeping, so this is usually how we find them. On average, they sleep about 16 hours a day. That's because they're nighttime hunters. That's when they start to wake up around the time that the sun starts to set. A beautiful look at her there. See our male is in the back. You can see his mane poking up just a bit. We'll let those big cats keep on sleeping. Coming up here on the left, you can see. One of our warthogs out uh, there in the middle. Warthogs are some of the largest burrowing animals in the world. You can see the large burrows down below there. Uh, we also got some water buck hanging out there, those shaggy looking antelope. See, they have that white ring around their bottoms. That helps them stick together and know who to follow. We got a bontebok there on the right. Another one of those water buck there as well. And then right by the truck is where those ostrich are hanging out. As I said, they are the largest birds in the world. And yeah, check out those eggs right by the road there. Uh, you can tell by the size of them alone that they belong to the ostrich. Those are the largest eggs in the world with each one weighing about three pounds and holding the equivalent of about chicken eggs. All of our ostrich are females, so those eggs won't be hatching anytime soon there. Nigerian dwarf goats here. They look like a little baby 
babies, but they are full grown, so they will stay that size their whole lives. Also very social animals. We usually find them hanging out in groups together. They also got a great sense of balance, much like other species of goats, so that's why we find them climbing on top of whatever they can in there.